we're talking about um, models of real world systems or control systems, uh, one of the phrases that we use is effort and flow variables. And um, these are actually intuitive concepts that you're already well familiar with, we're just putting a different name on them. So essentially the problem like, is, is this. What if we want to build a model of a black box? Um, and we can't look inside that box. How do we go and do it? If this was physics, we would open that, that box and we would jump right into the nitty gritty and find out what's going on. Are there cats in the box? Is Schrodinger in the box? Is there electronics? What's happening? But in many times in engineering, that process is either impossible, maybe you're using proprietary software and you'll void the warranty if you open it, or it's just too much hassle to do. Say you wanted to build a model of an aircraft, you don't want to have to model every single person and every single air molecule inside of that aircraft, you want to start from a broader view. So here's, here's the way we do that. Essentially, we want to identify what are our inputs, what are our important inputs, what are our important outputs, and what is the relationship between them. And those are what we refer to as effort and flow variables. An effort variable is something that drives the system to change, and the flow variable is something that changes as a consequence of that effort. So let's look at some examples for a mechanical, electrical, uh, electrical, thermal or, or fluid systems. For, for a mechanical system, for example, an effort variable is typically a force. Why? Because of Newton's second law. Newton's, uh, Newton's law says that if an object does not experience a force, it will stay in motion or it will stay at rest. And so it follows that if we do apply a force, we expect a position to change, or at least an acceleration to occur. For an electrical component, for example, instead, the effort variable would be voltage. Why? Because a voltage is like an electrical force. It provides a drive for the system to change. A thermal, uh, a thermal uh, effort variable, that's a change in temperature, a difference in temperature. Why? Because if I have a difference in temperature, um, heat flows from one place to another. If I've got two things and they are at the same temperature, heat won't flow from one to the other. And for a fluid, it would usually be something like having a higher pressure. Without that pressure difference, uh, you wouldn't expect any movement. So effort is really the variable that's driving change. Flow then, uh, the flow variable, is what is changing in response to that. So for a mechanical system, it's usually some form of position. I apply a force and the car moves. For an electrical system, it's usually charge or current. So if I apply a voltage, um, current will flow down this piece of wire. Uh, like I said, if I have a difference in temperature, heat will flow. If I have a difference in pressure, liquid or, or volume will flow. Um, so those are just some examples of flow and effort variables uh, that we can use to discuss our systems.